Welcome to the Bearded Bama Bush Crafter. It is Friday. I'm outside trying to get some things done. We had, we finally got some rain this past week and some storms kind of brewed up. Get those things this time of year. Not as, they're not as violent as they are in the springtime. But I wanted y'all to look around here. I don't know if it, it doesn't look like it shows up well on the camera. But so much pine straw fell during the rain and the wind. So now I have got all this fall, all this fall right here to clean up the leaves. It's always something to do. Never without a, um, a job or a project. Leaves everywhere. Been trying to clean up a little bit. It had gotten up all in my little workstation here. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Got a couple little things going on today with cleaning up. And I wanted to show you guys something. Okay, a lot of you guys know by now that I like stories and the theory of Bigfoot and I have friends who enjoy these stories and enjoy the theory of Bigfoot the existence of Bigfoot of Sasquatch of a Bigfoot and I have finally found a Bigfoot and I'm excited let me show you guys this here is Bigfoot <laughs> this is a solid concrete statue and it is about that tall man i think this thing weighs about 60 pounds it's pretty heavy it may weigh more than that stumbled across it here locally and my son and i were coming back from home depot one day and we passed this little area i think the turkeys are coming to join me these turkeys are so much like pets and he looked over, my son looked over to the side of the road, and he said, Dad, there's a Bigfoot. Of course, I was like, then I realized what he was talking about. So we turned around, and we pulled in. The guy's got a little flea market um, set up in his yard, and he has these statues that he makes. He has all these molds, gargoyles, and gnomes, and different things. And we got to looking around, and he had a Bigfoot, but it was not the type of Bigfoot. I'll show you guys that statue later on. But I got to talking to the man. He said he could get me what I was looking for. So this is the one I have been looking for. And normally when I find them, they're very expensive. I have painted this one. This was just basic a cement color because it was cement. And I primed it real well and let it dry. And let's try the detail in this thing. See his butt crack and all. Muscles, hair. The guy said he had some molds, so he made me one. And I got it at a real good price. So we're looking, we got it talking to him. Come here, Turk Turk. Got it talking to him, and I'm going to try to get these things painted up and see if there's an interest in people wanting to buy them. I know I like having statues of um, Bigfoot. This is the first one that I've owned because every time I came across one, it was just so expensive and I didn't have the money to put down. But this one was very affordable. The guy is uh, worked me a good deal. So I was able to get some statues, other types of statues. Got some gargoyles and got another type of Bigfoot. And later on, I'll share that one with you guys. But I'm going to get this one painted up. It's not going to be finished today kind of touching it up ah, with some camo brown earth brown and i'm just touching it up i've noticed when this stuff dries you'll see little little spots on it i guess it's just absorbing into those little pores on the statue check him out one more again look at the detail on him look at his face so that's exciting i finally found bigfoot I need a little flock of turkeys. They've settled in, but they're kind of, they're dumb. They get into the, 
coop here and they get out that yard and they get hung up. Come on, church, church. Come on, boy. Church, 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 church. Follow me around like pets. Check them out. Hey, girl. What's up there? So pet the screen. These things are so docile. Uh, it's out of... <laughs> We'd have to really be hungry for me to kill these birds. My uh, oldest son, he loves them. They're pretty cool. There's the younger gobbler. It was funny. I knew when I, I kept them pinned up for a few days and uh, when I let them out, I knew that Sergeant Major, my Aaron Gansett here, he's been with us for four or five years. I knew there was gonna have to be some, the pecking order was gonna have to be established. So it started and actually started with one of the hens and he fixed that pretty quick. And then he got with the young Tom, which he's that back one there. And believe it or not, I may have already said this, but that bird is not even a year old. And he is, he's already much bigger than Sergeant Major. So they got out here and got to fighting. And I kind of felt like Sergeant Major could hold his own. And he did. And it's pretty funny. 10, 15 minutes later of, you know, this is mine, not yours kind of deal. The, the new gobbler, he relented, and everything was settled. It is such a beautiful afternoon. Going to hopefully get in the woods tomorrow. And I've been trying to get out and shoot my bow a little bit. I don't get to shoot it, or I just don't take the time to shoot it like I want to. Sometimes just life gets in the way. Man, check this out. Let's look, look at this beautiful bluebird sky. So this afternoon, I'm going to take me a little bit of time and I'm going to shoot this 3D target. See how my grouping is. And tomorrow is the bow season in the area where I live. It opens up. There's my target. And one thing I got excited about, I had made a video, I believe it was last year, and I was shooting my bow, just kind of talking about it a little bit. And I had misplaced my rangefinder. Well, lo and behold, during turkey season, I found it. It was in my turkey vest. And I had looked in that thing. I just overlooked it. And back during the spring, I was turkey hunting. And I was digging down for a snack in my water bottle, and I pulled this out. Needless to say, I was very happy. So I'm going to get out here. Let me see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me slow down there. I'm going to see how my grouping is. I like to start out close and just shoot it a few times. I know you can get on these YouTube channels and there's all these guys that are professionals and they talk about all, how you should shoot this and that. But I just kind of find something that works for me and I get into that and that's how I shoot. I do try to shoot from elevated positions and different angles and I try to guess my yardage and then I take my range finder and shoot it. But I do have things set up where I know where I'm standing at. Here in, in our area, normally you're 30 yards is, is stretching it. I, I have, in the, in the past, there was an archery range where we used to go and I was making up to 80 yards on some of those shots and was, was pretty good at it. Never made a shot like that on a live animal. That would be, that'd be a poke. But I, I know there's guys that I read about and there's videos out where they do make those kind of shots. But here in our area, if you just look, it is so thick. It's almost jungle-like. You know, 10, 15, 20 yards. That's pretty much what you have here. 30, 35 is stretching it. And uh, crossbows are legal, and people get, you know, further shots with those, plus to get faster on the feet per second. So I'm going to warm up here for a minute, and let's see how we do. All right, guys. There's my group. This is at 85 yards. Boom. Five shots. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's 10, 10 or 15 yards. That's a good group. 
I was a little forward. I want to be a little further back here. I tend to do that when I first start shooting. But normally, you want to come up the leg. You want to be right about in here. And that's where the heart is. Put it right into that pump house. The turkeys have found me. I'm telling you, like dogs here. Okay, so let's try this again. Something I really enjoy about archery, bow hunting, when I do it, that's the only thing I'm concentrating on is shooting. It's so funny, your mind can be so busy, so rushed. You can have all kinds of problems, you name it. You get out here and start shooting your bow, and it's like the world just slows down and stops. This was my second. And I'm trying to move. I want to shoot. This is my second group. I tend to shoot forward a little bit, so I have to pull it. I got two in the heart, and I clipped the lung with that one. And my knock broke on one of my prices. These are feathers. They're wearing out. And these right here are veins. And it's a vinyl uh, material. I like having both um, when the weather kind of gets damp. Just found, yeah, just found a knife. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder how long this has been here. It's an old Swiss Army style knife. Man, that's wild. That's cool. We'll clean it up and see how that works. Um, the veins hold up better in the wet weather versus the feathers but i know people spray the feathers and stuff here again it comes down to what you want and what works for you but getting out and shooting getting to know your equipment it's ideal and that's especially when you get to shooting at deer you want to make sure you're making a quick and a clean kill on these animals but you know what it happens i've lost them shooting with guns and shooting with the bow but your handicap is way up when you're shooting with a bow that's for sure all right so this is my third group that's pretty tight i'm getting into the heart and the lungs this is a glendale buck 3d target bought this one I had one for years and years and and it wore out and i changed it up since the original more plastic than it is the foam just this area where you actually shoot this foam and the legs and for well, the head it's check him out man it'd be nice to get a buck like that i wonder if i could hold myself together if he walked out or one like him so i've gotten that's that's three groups right there that one is better than the second one about like the first one so i'm gonna back off a little bit further and We'll see if I can keep that that tight pattern. Okay. So I backed off another 10 yards. And my fletchings are starting to pop off. So that was my first shot. This was my second shot. My third and my fourth. Got into the lung here. This would have been a killing shot. With the broadhead would have clipped the, the lung. Ooh, these shots right here would have been bad. So wouldn't want that at all. That's why you get out here and shoot. So you can kind of feel where you need to be. I've been exercising, working, trying to stay in shape for bow hunting. And it's funny. Because what I'll do, I'll do push-ups and then I'll get up and I'll shoot my bow. And kind of create what it's like when the adrenaline is rushing through your system. You drop down, do 10 push-ups, and then pull your bow back and shoot. You'll get some wild shots. You got to learn to, to when those stressors are going off, to calm yourself, get your breathing, and get your shot placed correctly. That's how you learn to do things. 
Okay, so this is my second shot. So my second group, as I pulled back 10 yards, dropped down, I did 20 push-ups. Check this out. This was my first shot. My second shot, my third, and my fourth. Chances are these shots right here, these three, definitely a kill shot. Let me get it. I'm thinking I'm not holding the camera right. That's definitely a kill shot. Pretty, uh, I feel good about that one. This one, mm, would probably wound the animal. Chance of survival, yes, but don't want to wound it. This one here, I believe I would have blah, 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 clipped some lung. Would have probably laid down and died. I had to back off that trail, let that animal die. Like I said, when you do push-ups, like when you're shooting anything, um, shooting your gun, running on a lap, picking up your gun, getting on target, that gives you kind of a a real feel of, which I've never been in a gunfight, don't want to be in one, but I do practice and I do try to prepare myself in case that situation ever arises, I can arise to that occasion but i hope that never has to happen but deer hunting you are hunting live animals your adrenaline kicks in your heart rate blood flow everything breathing your stressors increase there and doing push-ups kind of um, recreates that sensation of the heavy breathing and your adrenaline being kicked up and you have to get your breathing down and then get on target. All right, this was, I backed off 10 more yards. This is approximately 30 to 35 yards. My first shot, second shot, and of course my fletchings, my veins are just, they're just popping off. Third and final shot, which were both long. These, these were definitely kill shots, this one was lower paunch, wounded deer, run off. Hopefully won't die from infection. I have made shots on deer. Shoot too far back. And the deer was never recovered. A lot of times when you hit a deer in the lung, you give them time to lay down, the heart especially. They hit back at the liver. You get that dark blood. You give that deer time to lay up, it's going to bleed out and die. Instead of pushing on it and getting up and moving it and pushing it and pushing it. Because they're full of adrenaline when after you shoot them. But a lot of times when you hit them right through the pump house, you sit there and you'll watch them fall and die. What's up, Darby? All right. So I got my son standing right down there. He is at the target. This is 30 yards. That is a poke. I know there's a lot of people who hunt out west and they have a lot further shots, 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 shots than 30, 35. But here in this part of Alabama, 30 to 35 is going to be your max. A lot of times if you sit upright, the deer are going to be right under you. And you have to kind of figure out when you're in a tree stand, you're shooting down from the base of the tree out with your yardage and all, and then how the arrow's going down into the deer. So, I'm going to end it on that one. That was group therapy. And um, we'll see how things are going to go. All right, so, look at Skipper. Where's he at? There he is. He's training squirrels. Bow season opens up tomorrow for me. My plan is to get in the woods and spend midday down there. Feel pretty confident. If I get a deer within range, I can put a good kill shot on it. As I was saying earlier, bow hunting is one of my favorite things to do. Shooting, I used to shoot a lot more. <clears throat> shooting my, my bow and my guns. Kind of get busy with things and I 
find myself not doing some of the things I love as much as I used to. But that, you know, that happens. You get married and you have children. Your children, they have hobbies and you get involved taking them from point A to point B. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful day. Tonight, the temps are going to drop down to the 40s. This morning was a bit chilly. I think we're going to be seeing some frost here before too long. Who knows? I might get a deer tomorrow. It'd be nice just to see deer from the stand. That's always a plus to go to the woods and actually see deer. Whether I get an opportunity to take one or not, just seeing one from the stand. I count that as a success. To go into the woods, quiet your mind, work the wind, you're not spooking the animals, and coming out, I noticed that is success. But not getting a deer and bringing it out, that's definitely success. Backstrap fever, you know, coming at you, and you making some hamburger sausage, some cube steaks, some jerky. You name it, depending on how big the deer is on what all you can get. All right, guys, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. Y'all, please feel free. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Help me get out of this lower part of the, the dungeon realm of the algorithm and YouTube. And uh hope everyone is doing well. Look at this beautiful scenery out here in front of me. You can see up through the trees that beautiful blue bird sky. Old glory waving. Well, it's not waving. Just hanging there. The wind is not moving right now. And uh, Skipper is over here looking for a squirrel. Get a squirrel, Skip. Get a squirrel. All right, everybody. I appreciate you. Thanks for everything you guys do. And we'll see you later. Y'all take care.